Today, I wanna to talk about how to set up and properly use a joint here. We're gonna use some 19,000 frames per second slow-mo footage to help illustrate our points. And for speaking of slow-mo footage, a jointer is essentially just a hand plane. And it is a hand plane that moves very fast and is very scary and will hurt you. So it is very important to use a jointer safely. And we're gonna talk about that as well. I also wanna talk about some of the very common problems like getting a curved joint when you pass a board over, your board gets a slight curve to it and gets worse and worse as you go, as well as some other problems that are very common. A jointer is, is very simple though. And so I wanna to talk to you first about setup, but before we do that, let's talk about how a jointer works. So as you can see in this clip, a jointer consists of basically four parts. Uh, it has a fence, which isn't important when you're milling the wide face of the board, but it has an infeed table and an outfeed table. And as you can see in this clip, the infeed table is lower than the outfeed table and the outfeed table is even with the top of the cutter head. And that's how you get that flat area. Once you get that first flat area, you would then put that up against the fence to get a square and flat edge. And then you would continue with your milling process. So let's talk about how we set up the joiner for great results. When you set up your joiner, it is very simple. You need to do one of two things. Assuming that your outfeed and infeed table are flat, which I've never seen a joiner that wasn't but if you do everything right and you're still having problems, maybe you want to check and see that everything is ground flat. This would be a later step, but I'm just going to show you because we're here. Uh, you want to make sure your fence is square and you want to do that through the whole outfeed side. It doesn't matter as much on the infeed side because as I'll show you here in a minute, when you are jointing a board, your hands are always going to be ahead of the cutter head except at the very beginning. So let's look at this tight close-up shot here of how a board starts getting jointed. And this will help you understand why setup is so important. Now, as you can see, the board enters the cutting area and it creates sort of a scalloped pattern here at the beginning. And then that scalloped pattern lines up perfectly with the outfeed table. And once you have entered the outfeed table, you then change the pressure so that all your pressure is on the outfeed side of your jointer. Now that is really cool. And that is way bigger of a cut than you normally want to take. We lowered the infeed table quite a bit for that shot so that it would accentuate what we were trying to show. You really typically don't want to take more than a 16th of an inch if you're running a, a jointer that runs on standard 120 and maybe up to an eighth of an inch if you're running a, a higher powered 220 volt or 240 volt jointer. But when you go to setup, it's very simple. It's, you want to take a combo square that uh, you know to be flat and square and you want to adjust your outfeed table tell and you, you hold your square loosely and you want to adjust your outfeed table so at the very top of the cut you just barely are moving your square and that is going to be perfectly set up. And then as you can see my infeed table is about, I don't know, a sixteenth below the square, but when you know you have it right, is loosely holding it and it just barely moves and you can just barely hear it. So let's talk about how to use a jointer. Now joining a board that is relatively flat to start with is very easy. Two of the most common problems are a board with twist and that over time you are consistently getting a slight curves on your board. Now the slight curve on the board has to do with one of two things. One, your outfeed table is lower than your cutter head or higher, uh, that it's not aligned correctly. Typically it's that it's too low. And what happens is once you get past your cutter head and put pressure on this side, you're now pushing down and you get kind of a slant when you cut. Uh, the other reason for that curve is you keep pressure on the back too long. Now, when I joint a board, which we'll show you live here in a second, as soon as it gets to right about there, I start putting pressure on the outfeed side. And you always, I personally think you always wanna use paddles. That is, there are different schools of thought. There's American style guards like this and European style guards. The European style guards, typically people use their hands. I am not one of them, but I digress. So when I get to about right here, that's when pressure goes to the front of the board. And you essentially drag it across the top using the outfeed table, which is what gets it flat. And so, as you can see here, if I keep pressure on the back too long, look at that slant. And now it's, it's angled up when it's cutting. And then when I come to this side, we push down. And then you can see that would be what causes this curve. It happens both edge jointing, where you keep your pressure too long back here. 
and then you move to the front as well as face jointing. And then once you get a flat side, what you're gonna do is you're gonna kinda use diagonal pressure. So when you get a flat side, that's flat and you can reference it off your fence. So you're gonna push against your fence as well as pushing down on the outfeed side. And again, as soon as you get to about right here, that's when you push down on your outfeed and you're continuing to keep pressure here on your fence. And that's gonna give you a great square edge as long as your fence is square. So let me show you, uh, and again, we've removed the rabbiting ledge, which is something you wouldn't normally do and we've removed the guard for showing you. But if you had a board that was wider than your jointer, you could remove this rabbiting ledge and you can see this, this drop right here. So you can joint it flat, leaving the same overhang and then you can put a piece of plywood, which you know is flat underneath your board, run it through your planer, that'll give you a whole flat top, and then when you flip it over, you can just plane off that small rabbit until you get down to your regular board, and that'll give you a flat edge. So let me show you how this works. What I want you to pay attention to is just like in the slow-mo clips, is watch how the cutter head works, watch when I switch my pressure to the front, and then we're gonna talk about how we deal with a twist. So how do you know when your board is flat and you're done? Well, one, look, you can see no sunlight under here, and I found there's two ways to get where there's no sunlight. One, you can do jointing at night, and then you don't have to worry, your boards are always flat. Two, um, <laughs> sorry, gentlemen, that was the worst joke ever, but we're keeping it in. Two, it's very easy to tell when I put it on my outfeed table because the outfeed table is flat. When I pick it up, there's a slight suction effect when it's flat, and you know you're done. Another way is just to take a pencil, uh, just like you do with sanding, and make marks all over the board, and then you can tell when you have gotten rid of all of those, your board should be flat. Now, how do we deal with a twist? When we look at this board, it's got a slight twist to it. So we know that this corner is low, and this corner is low while these are high. So when I go to joint this, you want to transfer the pressure that you have to the low corners. So I'm going to start by putting pressure in this area when I start jointing. And then as I get through my cutter head and I'm moving to the back of the board, but still on my outfeed table, I'm going to switch my pressure over to this corner. So we're going to start like this and move diagonally across the board and keep doing that. And that should give us a flat edge. So let's try that right now. We're gonna put some marks on our board to make sure we get everything flat and give it a little test. All right, as you can see, there's no sunlight coming through. There's no more twist. And when I pick it up, there's a slight suctioning effect. So we have both sides flat. Obviously, you, this is not how you would flatten a board. You would do one side, then run it through the planer. But once we have a side flat, then we're gonna do the edge, which we talked about already. But you wanna make sure that you're pressing against the fence. You can see there's a huge gap here. So we know that pressure needs to be against the fence. Uh, otherwise, we're not gonna get a square edge. And it's the same thing. As soon as you get to the outfeed side, you wanna push down on the outfeed side. Now, one way that I've found to be a lot safer on this is I keep my fingers on the top of the fence. I know that even if I were to slip, I can catch myself. So I always keep my fingers on the top of the fence while I'm pushing down, and that allows me to feel a lot safer while I'm doing this. Okay, so to check this one, you can just take it and you run your square along the edge. Now I could see I'm slightly seeing some sunlight on my this side, uh, your left-hand side of your screen. And the reason is because of that big angle that was on that board is we didn't quite get it all. So this would be something we would need to run two passes to get completely square, but we would do with no issue. So that's about it. Joiners are pretty simple. They're a machine that needs to be respected, but if you use it safely, it's one of the most useful tools in hardwood lumber projects because it sets the course for the rest of your project being square. A couple other tips I can give you is, you know, because of the video, I kind of had to stand back just to be able to get the shot, but you want your body to sort of be evenly dispersed between the two. Once you get onto the outfeed table, that allows you to keep your weight centered over where you're pushing down, which will keep you safer. Never remove your guard for any reason, unless you are doing a board that is wider than your jointer and you need to make use of that rabbiting ledge. Other than that, it's a great tool to have. Typically in the grand scheme of building a wood shop, it's one of the last tools you buy because there's ways to get around it. But once you do get one, you see 
why they are so useful because it really saves you tons and tons of time in milling. So they're very useful to have. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you want to support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses store, pick up one of my new aprons, a dovetail jig or a stop block. Stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day.